Hi guys, hi everyone. Uh, yes, Ian Benjamin, Digital Hub. And today is a first. I mean, we are, we are delighted to have uh, Diana Richardson. Diana Richardson is the social media and com community manager for SEM Rush. So it's my first international guest, which is great. And the second sort of gem about this is that um, SEM, SEM Rush is my first sort of tech vendor that's, on the, uh, that's guesting on Digital Hub. So a double whammy in that respect. But, um, but yeah, so we're also blessed with um, Diana going to be demoing a new SEM feature, SEM Rust feature that was only launched this week. So it's brand new, proper sizzling. So totally privileged to be able to demo this to my audience um, on YouTube and also the listeners of the podcast as well. So I'm chuffed to bits. So, but for anyone who's listening, any of our uh, listeners and viewers who aren't familiar with SEM Rush, SEM Rush is probably the most highly used um, SEO tool. Increases the um, data um, analytics, the competitor analysis. Um, so, it's essential for any digital marketing person or anyone who's got a website essentially um, mm. to provide traffic uh, to the website. So, totally, totally chuffed that, um, to be in the company of SEM Rush, if you like. But also, um, my guest today is helping me out um, is Cheryl Luze. Cheryl's a previous Digital Hub guest and Cheryl's a SEO guru, um, SEO enthusiast and she just loves SEO and she runs and she's the founder of Wagada, uh, Wagada Digital Marketing. So if anyone doesn't know Wagada, it's www.wagada.co.uk and they are a digital marketing agency based in Hertfordshire in, uh, in the UK. Uh, they look after the digital marketing needs for a lot of um, SMEs and enterprises throughout the UK and Europe across multiple sectors. So check them out. Uh, so wag it up. And so Cheryl's obviously from a SEO perspective is going to help me out and throw some insights to the listeners and viewers from um, an SEM rush sort of demo perspective. So Look, without further ado, I'm pretty, really, really excited about this. So, um, hi, Cheryl. Hi, Diana. Hi. Hello. Hi, hi Diana. It's so exciting to, to meet you and have you here, Diana. So, oh, what, thank you. One thing that we're really intrigued about, we want to know exactly what it's like to work at SEM Rush, what the perks are, what the atmosphere is like, what the culture is like. We want the inside vibe inside on what school. it's like. Yes. <laughs> Well, just like you too, I've been a digital marketer for a very long time and I use the SEM Rush tool suite for, throughout my career. So even just interviewing for <laughs> my job, I was like completely starstruck to be engaging with one of the brands and one of the tools that I just loved already. So you can, I'm like still kind of starstruck that I work here. <laughs> How long it's, it? really, <laughs> it's amazing. How long have you been employed by them now? How long have you been I'm going on like six months now too. Oh wow! Yeah, so it's still quite exciting. It's still and but the culture too is really interesting because it is an international company. So working from home, working remote, and that uh, that level of collaboration has already been ingrained. So even pre-COVID times, they just have this wonderful sense of international collaboration and brainstorming. So it's been actually a quite easy transition into that life. I work fully remote. I work from home. I love that. They completely support that. They do have lots of right. offices all over the place, um, which everyone is really missing right now. Anyone that is at home who usually works in the office is really missing the office camaraderie right now. And, but yeah. for me, it's been awesome to, to communicate and connect. I mean, I have friends all over the world and coworkers all over the world that I've never experienced that before. So it's wow. really amazing. But let, me just and, ask you, let me just ask you real quickly. Sorry to yeah. interject. I mean, so you were like um, interviewed online, onboarded online, because yep. kind of, you've been on there six months. So this all happened yeah. through COVID. Yep. <laughs> yes, it did. <laughs> so uh, it's been it's been interesting, but they have they have it together. It was very smooth. They knew yeah, exactly what sure. they were doing. Um, and other parts of the culture too, we just, in back in August, we had a birthday celebration. We did that all virtually and they, they put a lot of value in not just like our clientele's community, but our community. We have regular check-ins with HR. We have regular check-ins with our teams. We are trying to work out how to connect with our teams 
um, in more than just a, in a meeting way. And they, they value that a lot. They value brainstorming. There's a lot of experimenting and creativity and there's room to fail. And it's really fun and energetic. And there's lots of momentum, even though I can't like literally pat someone on the back or like, you know, get on a whiteboard with somebody. Um, right. We have a lot of tools at our disposal to do that virtually. And it's really fun. And I actually no think it adds no from doubt. someone who has just worked with American companies as an employer, um, it's been really interesting to have this international aspect to it. So, and it hasn't hindered, it's cool. only been more incredible. So it's, it's awesome. <laughs> cool, 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 let's hear it. Wow, so you're talking a lot about the innovation. And I think as, as a customer of SEM Rush, I do very much appreciate, you know, all the innovation, all the new tools that you're constantly bringing out. But tell us about that. How do they kind of like develop this innovation in the business? Is it kind of part of the ethos of the company or how does that kind of work? Yeah, I mean, at the, the founders, when you decide to make a digital marketing product, you don't think it's just going to remain static. And so the innovation and creativity and working through workflows and efficiency are absolutely at the hub of it because our goal is to make your job, Cheryl, and your teams better and more efficient because there's so much involved in doing the day-to-day -day SEO tasks and content creation. I mean, there's just so much, there's so much. <laughs> we yeah. wanna help you do all the things. Yeah. And that is absolutely part of what they do. So we we take a lot of feedback from our community, our, our community, the Cheryl's of the world are so vital to us in that, in that feedback and they keep us innovating in the right direction and help us course correct if we've veered off track. And, you know, it's just, it is the internal momentum of the, of the system. It's like, it's the core, it's the earth core. Yes. And then everything outward is just the result of that. It very much feels like that, actually. It feels like Good. it's so embedded. The innovation is, is very much embedded in what you're trying to yeah. achieve. And then there's fun jobs like mine where I get to like talk about all that because it's cool yeah. and it's fun and it's exciting. And, you know, so it just, the whole, the whole system of it is really hot and high momentum and uh, it's, it's, but it's from the inside. It's not anyone trying to like fix something or interject. It's like, it's the core that goes out. <laughs> it's the, 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 the DNA that runs through the business, essentially. Yeah, it is. And, in a, and you can tell it's, in a, it's a very natural, organic way. Like it, I've worked for other big companies and there's always like this wrench or like things are like kind of trying to align, but that is not, that's not here. Innovation and wanting wow. to educate and wanting to make the workflows better for our agency partners and for freelancers and SEOs, like that's, that's what this is about. Right. That's, that's amazing. Cause I mean, you're pretty much living what you're, you're singing your own song essentially. And um, right. you know what I mean? <laughs> you know? Yeah. When, when I was interviewing uh, for my job too, and we were talking about like the perspective that I, that I can bring, I said, well, like I am your audience. Like I, I was the person that needed this tool and I pushed for this tool. So like, I am you guys, <laughs> so yeah. it was a natural fit. <laughs> Good. And they obviously agreed because they gave you the job. Yeah, <laughs> I won them over with that one. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, well done, well done. Um, and as, as well as kind of having a tool that you're giving out to people like me, you also have the Academy, which is a fantastic resource to help people learn SEO. And I suppose then they can get more out of the tools. Like how do you kind of keep that you know, up to date and keep, keep that going, keep the, the fuel on the fire with the, with the whole Academy? <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, that's a, a team in and of itself. So that's a, a you know a singular focus for one team with a, within a team within SEM Rush as a whole. And I don't think you are you could be a part of this particular business, the SEO, the digital marketing business, without wanting to educate and mm -hmm. without wanting to keep that knowledge. And we do that. I mean, the academy is a fantastic resource, and I love it because. One of the benefits I think of the tool suite within SDM Rush is you can start it as a beginner. Like we all had a day one on the job, right? Like yeah. none of us were a, not like a singer, like you're born to sing. You're just born with this talent. We all had to learn it yeah. and it's a teachable skill. And we want to empower those people, you know, especially, and we'll get into this, I think a little bit later about like 2021 outlook, but I think like in this environment of wanting to hone and enhance your own skill set that virtual and share the knowledge piece. share the knowledge share the knowledge yeah. Yeah, share the love. yeah 
And we can, if you can teach it, we want to teach it. And um, again, that's another, and you'll see that in our, in our social media strategy too, like education is a, one of those other pillars of, of the business. Why not? So let me just ask you, me. so out of all the um, sort of your partners globally, I mean, is the typical job title of an SEM rush user is it a like digital marketing manager or is it an seo what's the typical the most common job title of a user would you say and job titles are so funny right it's me being a <laughs> I, recruiter. Think... I mean i'm a recruiter right so i mean I just you've also to... called yourself a headhunter and you've also i mean you're a hiring specialist like you I can am. have a different you know i'm using exactly. my seo rolodex of synonyms here <laughs> oh, <gosh. laughs> of, of different titles you can so have. valuable to have that so well, we see like the people that really like can use the tool are the ones doing the optimizing. So they are the managers with teams. They are the supervisors with teams. They are the specialists doing it. They are the optimizers. They are the SEOs. They are the content creators. They are the analysts. They are the report, the ones that do the reporting. Um, you know, those are the yeah. people that get the most out of this tool. So because it helps them do the work. So 100%. that's who's yeah. doing it. So Okay, good. Yeah, that's that's who we want yeah, to help. That's who I we thought, support. I, thought it would be. I mean, I thought, I thought it would be. And um, I mean, so in terms of, from your perspective as a community manager, is there any sort of like initial tips um, for anyone who wants to kind of build their own sort of community within their organization? What would you, yeah. what sort of tips would you give? Because I mean, a lot of people, you know, are going down that route now in terms of building their own community. So what would you say are some of the things that you've done that you would advise somebody to do? It's, it's such an interesting concept too, because it's also a strategy and it's not as natural sometimes as your neighbors in that kind of community. But if you, if building a community is a strategy you wanna do, make sure it's something that you can continue to do because there's a momentum behind it. I feel like I've used that word a lot today, but it's very applicable <laughs> to, if, if it's not something you're going to genuinely be interested in, if you're not genuinely interested in the people you are connected to, then it's going to be a failed strategy. So make sure out of the gate, you're interested in what these people have to say and you want to be with them regularly. And because being present is a really strong part of that, just retweeting this or sharing this post is not going to build a true community because a community is meant to share insight, brainstorm, swap ideas, and kind of make friends online, make yeah. colleagues online and share that with our peers. So you have to be present, but you have to be strategic about who you want in that community. Um, okay. Make sure you're engaging people that share and engage um, just watchers, they're fine. They've got a great place too. But when you're building a community, you need contributors. Okay. So how, how big is the community now? So the, you know, you're, you know, how many <laughs> members have you got? Oh my gosh. Well, SEM Rush is huge because we've got YouTube, we've got Twitter and LinkedIn and a Facebook uh, group. Yeah. And I mean, I don't have a number. It's too right, but I mean, so, is, so like in terms of big, like big. regular... <laughs> Um, community content. I mean, it's just like ongoing, evolving all the time in terms of different subject matters because, or disciplines. Right. Well, and because we kind of touch on different parts of our community with those different subject matters. So if we're talking about Google over here, then that's a certain part of the community. If we're talking right, about yeah, yeah. local SEO, then that's this, you know, so we've got a really great and niched down community that we tap into every single day. Um, I do know that users on the tool were up to six million so right. that's already a pretty significant number and we hit that number over the that's summer, what I mean. so right okay yeah it must be so hard i mean to kind of break it down because everyone's got yeah. different um current issues that they want to explore or, or learn about and it's, it's such a, a vast world of seo there's hundreds of different um attributes or, or niches within that niche so to kind of manage everyone's expectations or what they want it must be really really hard to do really challenging so uh you know it is but we and we but we value that too and we want to be the resource for that so our blog is this huge hub of different niches and different sectors of seo and digital marketing we talk about you know content development and sales funnels and all sorts of different aspects that you as an seo too are all surrounded with so we we want to be that resource. We want to be that go-to, no matter what 
is your is your little sector you can come to us and we've got some information for you we've got resources for you fantastic okay is there any sort of like key areas from a um uh an roi perspective that you can you know that you contribute more to than any other area from an roi perspective me personally or SEM no, Rush? No, 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 SEM Rush, not you personally, no. Um. <laughs> sure, sure, it has lots of ROI, but... I mean, yeah, exactly. That's, kind of, that's, that's a given, right? Um, no, no, it's very so, valuable. Yeah, I mean, so, <laughs> so, I mean, it's, it's, again, it's hard to, to kind of quantify, I suppose, because, I mean, you, just, you support so many, like, six million customers, and each customer is different in their own way, then from different industries. But, I mean, is there any particular area from a bottom line perspective that that the, the SEM rush kind of heavily contributes more to? I think, well, and I think from like an agency or the SEO specialist perspective, I think we help on the investment of time. I think we, with using one tool to help efficient, make your workflow more efficient, that you have more time to take on more clients. You have more time to, or invest more time in selective clients. So I think there's a lot of, usefulness in being efficient and having not having to log into six different things you know because this person's over here and i need you know that whole mess so it really is valuable in that regard too but the insight in the data that we provide as a data provider is hugely beneficial to Hmm. prospecting new clients bringing on new clients and making strategies and even if you don't work with clients if you're an in-house seo digital marketing team the deep dive ability you can use this tool set for, I think it just makes that more stronger at your job and makes your own strategy higher. So your marketing is smarter. One of my personal philosophies of digital marketing is doing it in a smart way, not just not just because your competitor is doing it, not just because like you keep seeing SEM Rush tweet about it. Like a, a smart strategy has to be applicable. And I think with tools, like SEM Rush to arm you with data and a way to make a proper workflow, you can do that. Right. Cool. So I think the ROI for the agencies is in the time management and the data and the strategy you can build upon from, from a got, good foundation. It's really good from a business development point of view as well. So as well as supporting our clients, we can use it to get new clients. And mm-hmm. I think one of the one of the things I use most often in a proposal is um, on the domain overview, there's a bar chart, you know what I mean, that then shows what pages of Google, you know, how many keywords, what percentage of keywords are on different pages of Google. And right. I just find that's very visual because people yes. tend to kind of, they're always Googling themselves, you know, and they come to us and they say, oh, I'm sure we're doing okay, but we could do better. And then you show them that bar chart and they're always really surprised at how badly they're doing. And it's that that kind of gets us over the edge, I think, sometimes to, to actually get the client to get the piece of work. So uh, I, I completely find very agree. And our data, our data visualization teams, the teams that are working in that really get that and like I take screenshots from just within the tool like I don't have to integrate it with anything Uh, I just take a screenshot of what it looks like because it's beautiful and there's lines and you know as someone who's posting our stuff on social media I can just play in the tool and I don't even really need a lot of help from the design team because it already looks really nice and I can take a little video and there we go, because they've done a really great job of understanding, because I am I love data visualization, just I love data, so I love when I can see it, and I love that aspect of the tool, too, and that they think about that. The product team thinks about that when we're launching yeah. things, wait till, and wait till I show you the, this new feature, it's really, it's I can't wait. very visual. Oh, <laughs> coming up this new feature. Looking forward wait. to that, looking forward to that. So in your in your role as kind of community manager, you must get to meet some some of the big sort of SEO celebs. I mean, tell us tell us who you've met. Give us the dirt. <laughs> <laughs> well, since I've only been part of this during COVID, I have yet to oh, meet yeah. anyone in person. And like, I'm a hugger, <laughs> so I've yet to like hug oh. anybody. But it's been um, it's amazing too. And Cheryl, you'll relate to me here, like especially being in the industry for so long, like you really do value these people as celebrities. And so, I mean, I've been able to work with Jason Bernard and I've been able to talk to Aleda and I've been able to like work with these people who, and like Nick Rager and just these amazing and like Lily Ray and I are like chat on Twitter. Like, it's just so cool to have that edge um, and get to talk to the people that I've known for so long and to now have 
the in <laughs> to yes, yes. sort of with them and just have this stronger connection because it's just, I'm such a SEO fan girl myself that it's been incredible uh, to connect and work with these people. And we've got some cool things coming down the pike. Um, that's going to even, that's going to ramp that up even more. So stay tuned. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's exciting. So with all these, all these celebs you're hanging out with, do you have any kind of, um, any tips, any insider knowledge of what's going to happen over the next six months to a year in the SEO world? What, what can you, what can you reveal? <laughs> so to me, so for me personally, I think there's two, twofold that's going to happen. And we kind of touched on this a little bit earlier, but I think 2021, I think especially the beginning of 2021 is going to be another few months of building up our own skills as people are still, they're going to kick off the year, still working remote, still working from home as we're, I was just reading this morning about um, the surge in new cases globally. Mm. And um, so a lot of, and a lot of people are in the situation where they're looking for new jobs because their previous company had to let them go or furlough them or something. So I think we're still in a very high demand for education and honing our own skills. So why not learn SEO? It's a, it's the yeah. best time as any, right? To like check that off your That's education. Right. There's, there's a lot of that actually. Um, I'm sure globally that in, since the lockdown has affected everybody internationally, that people have taken the time out to kind of self-development, self-improvement. Yeah. Digital, and it's digital easy to access things. right now. Yeah, absolutely right. I mean, I think it's a, you're absolutely a great school to learn the PPC side of things as well. Mm -hmm. um, I think a lot of companies have, have um, embraced uh, digital media and or just digitization full stop uh, digital transformation. Right. Uh, and that's not going to go away now. Like that's no. fully ingrained in the future business strategy. And I hope as businesses are planning for 2021 that they that the conversation around digital marketing has evolved more yeah. as well. Um, Absolutely. And strengthened. Yeah, it's all the part other... of the whole digital transformation journey. I mean, a lot of companies are, I think it's COVID has accelerated digital transformation and digitization and, and digital marketing is a massive part of that. And uh, I think, you know, it's accelerated that and, and lo long may it continue, long may it continue, you know. Yeah, exactly. And I think the days are gone of not having the C-suites buy-in or something. And I remember those days and my yeah. agency days too. Um, well, and this goes way, way back to when I first said, you know, I still got the question, why do I need a website or why do I need Google well, ads when I get word of mouth? And, you know, I think those days are long gone. I have not been asked that question in a very long time, but, Thank God. you know, <laughs> COVID just really proved the importance of, of a lot of things in digital marketing, not just that you need to be present, but that you have to have authenticity and tone of voice and adaptability and mm -hmm. a number of different things in, I think we've also seen that in Google. We've, I mean, look at all of the different Google My Business features that launched in yeah. like a three month time span just to adapt to the world. So I think we're also seeing a push from tech companies in that quick adaptability that life is crazy um, and they need to be on top of it and paying attention to it. So there's just from tip yeah. to toe, I think we've seen some crazy, crazy so stuff much going on. are now ingrained in us. The yeah. other quick thing back to Cheryl's question too, and kind of tying into what I was saying about Google, like I think 2021 is going to be a year of taking advantage of opportunities. So I'm sure you saw the, also the conversation this week about the new passage indexing, that, which is actually ranking um, that Google announced. And as well as we just did a study on people also ask, you know, and taking advantage of different features already present in the search results page in different ways as I wish I had known about taking advantage of people also ask when I was working with, you know, clients on an agency side, what a genius strategy. Mm -hmm. And I had not put that in place yet, but we did this really cool study uh, and it just went out a few weeks ago. So it's still really new data about how to take advantage of that section. And then this Google announcing about this passage indexing and how is that going to change how we kind of structure data. They said yesterday in a tweet that we're, that content creators don't need to do anything special, but I'm a little skeptical. I think we're going to see a big push for, you know, more advanced schema markup and things like that, that help Google understand different passages within our content. So again, I think 2021 is going to be this momentum of 
or this movement of taking advantage of extra features that you may not have already been thinking of. Yeah, I'm in the featured snippet. Yeah, I've got a knowledge panel, but what other little tidbits on Google results page can I be present? Right, mm -hmm. gotcha. Wow, I opens up a new, you know, another whole horizon potentially of a- <laughs> But it's tricky. It's like, it's like, hard to do that because <laughs> if it was easy everyone would do it <laughs> well this is it i would say seo has got to be hard hasn't it because if it's yes. easy then everyone would do it but then actually there's only 10 spots on page one so i think yeah, actually seo it. has had to get harder and harder as more people have learned it really and that's kind yeah. of the way it's gone yeah. and that's not even like mobile's even more difficult because that's even smushed more even so <laughs> yeah true true yeah, yeah. hard real estate to uh to engage in it really is yeah. it really is it's tough. Yeah. It's tough. There's a lot going on. <laughs> yeah. Um, one of the features in SEM Rush that I haven't explored yet that maybe you can talk to us about that looks quite exciting is the lead generation tool. So, yeah. and I've not tried that yet. It's intrigued me. I kind of, the things just appear sometimes in SEM Rush. And if you don't kind of go <laughs> and like have a proper look, you kind of don't realize some of these new features have arrived. So tell us a little bit about that and how that helps agencies. Well, and the lead gen tool has been around for a long time. And I was asking my team about it too, because I was trying to get the inside scoop about the origin of the tool, but it's been around so long. There was no was origin story. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but it's, it is a really neat feature and um, it's a widget you can place on your own website. So if you are an agency, if you're an SEO agency, digital marketer, or even like a website creation and hosting agency, you can put this widget on your site because I think when people are, when your clients, you as an agency, when your potential clients are starting the research for digital marketing or do I need SEO? And they're kind of asking that question in their head. They don't always reach out to the agency to ask you, Cheryl, that question. They put their website into a tool and get an audit to see where they already stand. And so it's a really cool way of getting the lead back to you as the agency and incorporating more people into your initial sales funnel without them directly reaching out or without you having to fish for those leads. So now you've got their contact information, you've got their website and you've got their site audit. So you know where their site can improve or where their SEO can improve and you can start a, an educated conversation. So now it's not a blind reach out. Now it's not just you know that LinkedIn message we all get after we connect with somebody new. It's educated and hey, I can see your load time is slower. We can help with that. And, right. you know, you can have, I think, a more personalized conversation when you're trying to reach out and help. And you can actually reach out from that perspective yeah, and not you, like a salesy. Fact, you've got the data there to back up the conversation. So that gives you the opportunity to be validated, to have that, you know, intelligent, meaningful conversation. You've got the evidence, you've got the data to back it up. So it gives you right. a platform. And you can have a conversation and not a sales pitch. Yeah. So yeah. that's one of my, you'll, you'll hear that for me a lot is I like um, the perspective of creating conversations and not marketing, not sales. Like that's how we connect with actual people. And again, like this digital communication we've seen more and more is conversations are so valuable and not just pitching or outreach, there should be substance to it. And that's how you have a valuable interaction. And that's how you bring value to them and you. So I think the widget helps start that conversation. Mm. I, think, I think that's really important. It's become even more important over COVID. I think we're, we're quite resistant to being sold to at the moment. I think we're, we're, we're quite keen to have a conversation, but we don't want anyone to sell to us. So I was going to say that. So true. Yeah, and I think if I, if I was on the receiving end, so if I put my site into the widget on Cheryl's agency site, and because I'm I know it's now it's in my head, and now I've got the report back, but now Cheryl and her team reach out to me and say like, "Hey, what do you think about your site speed?" And like we can just even if you don't pitch me, even if I don't even come on as a client, I've had a nice conversation with now someone that I trust someone who knows what they're talking about and can connect in that way. And that builds, that's a long game of mm. building up your client base. Definitely, definitely. Interesting, interesting. I, I, want to, I want to get onto this new feature soon, but before I do that, okay. if I ask you about that, um, what, what's your, to date, what is your favorite um, feature? Oh, 
Ooh. Too many to choose from. <laughs> you always there like are. to go a bit rogue at the end, don't you, Ian? You, you always like to throw in a few questions few that he hasn't prepared you for, Diana. I'm very sorry. <laughs> but this careful. one, no, this one's good. And so, and I apologize, I'm a very long-winded, talky person. So I've got like a hundred <laughs> answers. <laughs> and, you know, get to the guts of it, so it's good. <laughs> yeah, so I'll say what got me as an SEM Rush customer as, when I was a digital marketer pitch, and I pitched this to the last two companies I worked for before I worked for SEM Rush is the site audit tool. It's so incredibly valuable. There's so much insight in one tool and it has separate widgets for crawlability and internal linking. And it's one nugget. <laughs> it's one little area of this tool that it, I love it. I love the information that it kicks back and it's on point with what it tells you are issues and errors and warnings. And I mean, it's, it's right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's one it's just one section so i love the site audit right super. and then you can measure progress as well can't you diana yes. so you can yes. fix some stuff and then you get a better percentage score and then that's yes. quite exciting and you know how much we love to track stuff yes. right <laughs> like, <laughs> Absolutely. yeah how about you cheryl what's you know i mean you've been using sem rush for a while so what's your favorite sort of feature well, I guess like me personally, I do most of the business development, so I tend to use the domain overview page, but I know the team spend most of their time probably on the rankings page, you know, looking at which pages are doing well, you know, what traffic is going to those, those sorts of things. But I'm quite, I'm just having this conversation with Diana. I'm going to go and speak to the team afterwards. I'm sure there's loads of things that SEM Rush does that they are not using. And we need to make sure that we're using all the features because, you know, I think they just use the same things over and over again. They don't go and explore what else is there. So I feel quite excited now about what else we can, uh, what else we can learn. I have learned about so many new features since working here too because I was in the same boat 100% like I did I had my my little workflow that I used in SEM rush you know from business to business and now that I work here and we go through a training as a new employee to look through all the features and I just every training I was like oh like oh my god like I didn't know that was there like what like <laughs> and I was like why didn't I know about this when I was <laughs> using the tool wow, yeah. <laughs> so much going on isn't it that. So, so it pushed, better. it pushed us, it actually pushed an initiative, it's kind of my idea, that we do like these quick 30 second helpful videos that we're sharing on social media now of the different features because oh, I nice. connected the yeah. dots. I was like, I, I used the tool and I missed this and I missed that and I couldn't be the only one. So yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's a great idea. Great idea to do that. Yeah. Definitely. You've got so much going on with it, you know. So look, yeah. so drum roll. <laughs> <laughs> this, this, new, this new new feature that's not been released to the world before so um so yeah, yeah. and cheryl's ranking team uh is gonna love it because it actually has to do with tracking rankings so let me i'll take over the screen here and we can take a little peek yeah. let's do it so if this this is really cool so within our listings management tool we listed two new features this week one is this it's you can track your position you know oh, the little video went away but i'll go do a demo the um you can track your positions within google maps right. so it's always been really difficult as an seo to track something like that so now we've incorporated it into the listing management tools so let me pop on over so this is the listing management dashboard and which is also a really cool tool if you're doing uh, local seo and citation management and things like that for your clients but here in the local rankings section, you can see we've added one location. This is, we have a lo location in Pennsylvania, but if you click on heat map, which is the new feature, you get to see your rankings in oh. Google maps. What's really cool is you get to see it for certain keywords. So these are three keywords. You can track up to five per location. And you get to set your radius of how far you want the radius, the map to scan. And you can set these grid points. So it, this is not like a default, like we set this up to look like this. And so you can customize it for your clients. So this is super cool, especially if you're working with clients like in home services, like AC, HVAC, uh, plumbers, things like that. They can see restaurants. Like I was looking at this uh, graph yesterday and um, I'm new to my area. So I'm Googling like on Google maps all the time, looking for restaurants nearby. So I can, I could see myself if I was over here at this mall, you know, pulling up Google maps and saying restaurant nearby. And I would love to know 
me as the restaurant, how I rank in this quadrant versus over here, because me as the customer, I don't know if I'm going to trek all the way down the interstate just to grab a bite. So there's some really, really cool um, features within, within this tracking. So Wow. That, I don't think there's any other tools that do that, do you? I've not seen another I don't, tool. Yeah. yeah, and that's what I really loved about this tool. And what you're going to like about the next feature too, too is that all in one, all in yeah. one. Right. <laughs> nice. You don't have to sign up for another vendor. You can get it right here. Again, it's customizable per location. You can change it, obviously. And as we were talking, Cheryl, like you can track your progress. We just uploaded this on October 19th, so there's no back data. But the history, you'll see, start to see the history each month that's updated monthly. Right. So you get to track your progress there. Very really cool. The detail, that is proper clever, isn't it? It's really of the... fun. It's really cool. All right, the other feature is- Let's um, do it. Really, really cool. You can now reply to reviews in SEM Rush. I would have loved this feature wow. <laughs> on my client site in my agency nice. days because we were doing reputation management. So we were managing reply reviews. And you, Cheryl, you know this, like your clients have such a hard time managing their businesses and then trying to reply to reviews on Facebook and Google. And now like you, if you're using SEMrush, you can reply right in the tool and you can see the thread of the previous communication. So this particular review, we can see that SEM Rush employee already replied to it, so there's no need, as opposed to this one, which just has the reply button, so no one has yet to reply. So now I know I've got a couple reviews I can I can that need you know response or something like that, all in one. That's okay. so exciting. There's quite a lot of evidence that the quicker that you reply, the um, stronger the effect as well. So actually, having it all in one place makes it so easy to reply really quickly. Well, and yes. I remember too, ha struggling to find a tool like to do that. So, I mean, when I was doing, when I was helping my clients reply to reviews, I was logging into their Facebook page. I was logging in as them on Google, yeah. my business, like time. And, so much time. Yeah. Mm. So, and now you get to keep the conversation in hand too, which I think is important for larger agencies that have more than one person managing like the customer service, online reputation side of things. So you can see like, oh, Diana replied to this. Oh, Cheryl responded last week. Like you can still, you can keep tabs on the conversation that's happening just all on one screen. Yeah, mm -hmm. save so much time, Shalina. Yeah. It's just- Yeah, no, it's really cool. Yeah, really Super. exciting, really cool stuff. Well, <laughs> I'm so glad I got to share that with you guys. And I was no, like a nice tie-in. I'm glad you did. I'm like, yeah, we've got that before anyone else has seen it. So um, that's- so, so when is that going live, Diana? Is that going oh, live? live? Oh, it's live it's already. Live. Wow. Yeah. See, I've not even noticed that. I need to go and have a look. Wow. So you do it. There's an upgrade to the listing management tool to get access to it. So it's just a new package that you can sign up for. Um, and that's how you'll get access to the new features. Wow. Cool. That's really exciting. Yeah. That is good. I think it's that fun. Is, <laughs> that, is, that is awesome. That is awesome. No, well, well done. Thanks a lot for sharing that with us. That's, uh, sure. I can stop sharing now too. Very, very valuable indeed. Very, very valuable indeed. So, I mean, is there, um, kind, of, kind of going forward, what's, so from your perspective, in terms of your, you've been with the company for six months, um, what, what are you looking to achieve? What's the, sort of like your career? I can't help you, can I, from a recruitment perspective? I will put my recruitment hat on. <laughs> are you trying to find Diana her next job? No, no, not <laughs> I'm just, just intrigued. I mean, just intrigued by, you know, I mean, I mean, where do you see, I mean, the company's growing at a rapid pace. I mean, everyone's, as I mentioned about digitization, everyone's getting on the digital marketing bandwagon. So, I mean, your job's going to grow, right? So, I mean, it you know, is. How, yeah, how, and sorry. You know, <laughs> where, do you see that, where do you see it going with you? My job personally has evolved so much already in the really? six months I've been here. Yes, I was originally hired just to cover, well, not I say just, but it's a big task. It's a full-time job as their Twitter community manager. Um, and I've evolved into uh, outreach Everything. on other platforms, growing my own personal brand in alignment with SEM Rush, doing amazing podcasts like this and speaking at events. And we're, we've got a great push for the other one cool thing too about SEM Rush too is they do believe in building up personal brands too. So they've been helping me do that as, you know, so I can be credible and out there and yeah, yeah. Um, represent them too. And I'm not the only one. And it's just amazing how they value this community. That's a, another foundational pillar is the value in the community. So I love being on the 
the front line of that. I love being the face-to-face -face person, you know, doing these things and reaching out and com and communicating and educating. So that's quite unusual. Both... Companies, I think, I think that's really cool that they do that. But I mean, some companies uh, would be hesitant to do that because they might think, okay, we raise someone's profile to a certain level, then that increases the chance of us losing that particular talent. But I think with the way the world is going, companies need to be doing more of that. And I think they are sort of leaning more towards that. But it's really good to hear it from, from you that, that they've done that. And yeah, so and I mean, there's an inherent risk in having people speak on behalf of you in this world of things being taken out of context and things like yeah. that. So it can be a risk that some businesses don't want either, but they're good at interviewing people and they're great at hiring and and retaining talent and and building on that talent and i think they i'm not i don't want to speak for them the people who hired me but i think they saw in me someone who knows the seo industry who likes to be social who wants to be educating who wants to make those people connections and i've been able to have a job that speaks to what I like to do and what I'm good at, as opposed to putting me, I was, you know, I was the Google girl for a very long time and I love that, but I wanted to do more. And so I've put myself on a career trajectory to do that. And I found hmm. by the luck of the universe during a pandemic a a company that supported that. And so it's, um, it's been an amazing ride and where there's no slowing down. So. <laughs> it's true that people buy people don't they so actually every business needs a person to be the face of the brand you know a bit like matt cuts was you know he was like <sighs> properly no one forgets matt no nope. <laughs> <laughs> definitely yeah it's, it's it's wonderful and it's wonderful to be supported in that way and it's i think it reflects SEM rush's core values significantly too in that they want a face for that community and there's a person and people behind the brand and there are people who understand the digital marketing community in that brand we're not just a SaaS technology company we are digital marketers at the core we uh, you know we know what your day-to-day -day is like yeah and that perspective you've done is, it right you've done it so you know that you know you know the, the, the nuances you know the challenges you know what the touch points and what people's problems that they want to solve or what they want to achieve with their marketing campaigns or what you know their clients want to achieve so right you know if you, cheryl came to me and said diana i'm like tackling x y and z through this client i would know exactly what she's talking about and then i can go translate that to our product team yeah. and like the, like that is the circle of feedback and community you know opinions and we need and SEM rush values as a whole because that's how our tool gets better that's how yeah. we get stronger that's how we make the Cheryl's of the world stronger and that's what we want to do super mm -hmm. that's great stuff great stuff yeah wonderful so you've got any more questions Cheryl do you want to anything that's kind of come to um, your head that you want to kind yeah, of yeah I think I think the, the only thing we didn't ask Diana was, um, what's her elevator pitch I was really keen to hear your elevator yeah, pitch, yeah, yeah. Diana. <laughs> so this was the one question I couldn't come up with an answer for <laughs> because I'm so long-winded. <laughs> I don't, I've never been good at elevator pitches. You so, should call it these skyscraper. Um... <laughs> I'm a long tail, long form kind of girl. Yes, like love that, love that. The long haul flight pitch. <laughs> yes. I'm a, let's have a glass of wine and have this conversation. Yeah, kind of Like, yeah. oh, you, you asked me a question in an elevator? Like crap, we'll have to meet up later. I can't. <laughs> I can't do it. That's <laughs> to be a very tall building. Yeah, yeah. Yes. A, a, a long haul flight to um, to London, maybe. Yeah. You know what I mean? yeah. I'll just follow you off the floor that you get off. You, I'll watch you, I'll walk you to your car, and we'll just be talking very quickly. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Well, what is it? You must have you know some bullet points. You know, three, four bullet points that you want to kind of get out there. And uh, yeah, so. I mean, it's a workflow tool, so that's that's what it's strong at. That it's it's not. It has lots of great little singular functionalities, but it's wonderful workflow. And the example that I give is keyword research. So we've got a tool called the keyword magic tool. It's going to give you the keyword data that you want, but you as the content writer need, you know, I like to take the content and the keyword research to the next level in which I use our content topic research tool. So we are like this workflow system um, with, you know, multiple tools involved, but if you can knock out like 
how you do your daily tasks in all in one suite, that's what we can get done. Right, mm -hmm. superb, wonderful. Do you think that's a feature that's being underutilized perhaps at the moment? I sometimes, yeah, because, and I try to work that into, we've got a, we've got a nice focus right now on showcasing the tools, the tool as a workflow tool. Um, you know, we've been producing those 30 second videos and we've actually got some really great influencers showing how their, their workflows, because I think that's its strength. It's mm. got 20, 25 some amazing tools, but when you work them together, that's what gets your day to day done. Right, mm. gotcha. Wonderful, super stuff. Well, wow. Is there anything that you want to say? I mean, I want to kind of, I mean, typically with the Digital Hub um, interviews, I'm sure that um, Cheryl's been a guest and mm -hmm. she uh, I listen. Of, um, agree with me on this. We like to kind of get under the hood of our guests a little bit, you know. So, um, so tell us a bit about you then. So, I know you've got a love for wine, haven't you? Yeah, so, I do. Is this like it's a, my favorite? A, <laughs> so, what is it? Yeah. So, what is it? So, you're based out in where you are. I mean, so these like Californian wine, American wines, would you like South African <laughs> wines? What's your kind of like your favorite tipple, as it were? <laughs> I love the I love the UK. British terminology of tipple and brilliant <laughs> and I, you know, I, I love that. I need to come over to England sometime. Yeah, man, get I, I would come English. back with it. I would come back with a UK accent, I think, because I would, <laughs> I would love all of your words. Um, <laughs> I got into wine. So I am originally from Virginia, which is on the East coast of the United States, but there's a lot of mountainous terrain and they have their own wine area there. And so not far from me were several wineries and just after turning 21, I started venturing out and the whole wine <laughs> experience is really cool because they grow the wines there and they walk you through how they even make wine and you become kind of a nerd in the science of oh drinking this delicious beverage. So you're, like an, you're an SEO nerd or SEO geek and you're also like a wine geek as well. Yeah. A little bit. <laughs> right. I like to understand how things happen. I think that's mm -hmm. why I I love digital marketing so much because I, I like understanding details. I'm very detail oriented, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. But wine tasting is really fun because you just get get a bunch of glasses and then you just keep on sipping, and <laughs> you get Fantastic. you end up having a great day. <laughs> you have to get Uber home. Yes. <laughs> You know, I, I, do, you, do you like gin, Diana? I'm very much into my oh, gin. Yes, I heard you're, that you typically ask in your interviews if you're gin or a vodka person. Oh, I do, I was, yes. like, yeah. I was like, oh no, Cheryl and I are going to have to have a conversation here. <laughs> <laughs> I will take cool. gin in my martini and I will take vodka in my uh, mixed drinks. Nice, <laughs> nice. But I'm, I'm a wine girl through and through. Right. <laughs> Over here in the UK, over the last like four or five years, it's been a massive like just explosion of gin like it's just oh it's gone mad glass. yeah it's just gone absolutely bananas it's so just many crazy. different sorts of gin it's just quite exciting i like to collect lots of gin so it's like yeah. have a selection of gins it's it's quite it's exciting industry i think it's yeah mad. i mean everyone's got gin in the house I mean, we've got two or three bottles in my house and we're not even big gin drinkers it's just like you can have a couple <laughs> of flavor gins madness well, what is your drink of choice, Ian? Me, I am. I, I'm, a, I'm a beer guy, lager. I like my lagers, like lagers. I love oh, you're a beer guy. Beers, but, but then again, but gin as well. I've got into my gin, you know, gin. Yeah. So yeah. definitely, a lot, a lot, a lot of lager, and a lot, a lot of my rum. Um, I think because of my Caribbean, uh, West Indian sort of origin. Yeah, I love so, rum. Rum, a lot, a lot of my rums. I mean, I've, you know, I've always got rum in the house um, and beer, lager. Um, <laughs> no, but you guys call it beer. <laughs> And because um, a really funny story, when I lived, I lived in the States for five years and um, I was always getting drilled and asked like, you guys drink warm beer over there, man. Because like we drink a lot of like bitter and ale. Like the one thing we know about Brits. Do you know what I mean? It's not really warm though, is it? Warm? No, it's not warm. It's like, it's everyone warm. thinks it's like, that it's really, really warm. It's like, you know, it's like, no, it's just like, you know, it's room temperature. And they're like, man, how can you drink warm beer? I'm like, you know, it's just ale, you know, but uh, <laughs> but I'm not really an ale drinker, but I mean, but yeah, I do like a, a nice cold lager and some rum. Then I'm, I'm nice. set. Like, definitely, definitely. I like a dark and stormy. Do you like those? Mm. Do you ever have those dark and stormy? Is that what's that? Uh, ginger ale and rum, isn't it? Oh, I've never heard of that one. No. Oh, I had it in Bermuda quite a lot. Yeah, it's really mm. nice. Oh, really? No, do you know what? I I I pour a beer out and I'll, I'll get a shot of rum, have it neat, and I'll sip it and I'll chase it with my lager. Yeah. Mm -hmm. like a proper West Indian type thing, you know, West Indian ting. That's what it is, right? <laughs> yeah. that, that's how we do it over there, you know. But uh, but yeah, yeah. so now definitely. 
So what else well, about you? So, you know, so with any of your hobbies or tell us a bit about Diana. Mm. Um, I am a big movie and TV person. I love watching the latest re like releases on Netflix. I miss going to the movies so much. Oh, really? Have you, have um, you seen Ozark, by the way? Ozark. Yes, I love Ozark. Oh, my gosh. How good was that? I love Jason Bateman and Laura Linney. They're, they're such amazing actors. And that show is... Oh, and the, the actress, and I can't remember her name, but the blonde with the yeah, blonde she's the best. Hair. Man, she's amazing. Great. She was the best one, I reckon. She's she my favourite. She's so good. Oh, what's her name? Um, Ruth. Ruth. Yes. Ruth. She's so yeah. good. And... Um, Cheryl, yeah, you got to see Ozark. Actually, you got to see Ozark. I've only just started watching it. I think I've watched the second one or something, and then I kind of got distracted, so I need to go yeah. back to oh, it. Oh, man, yeah. it's really good. But no, 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 because I reckon you'd be okay, because it's because I was like that. The first two, I was like, mm, okay. And then it starts to get going, and then it's just like, mad. you won't want to yeah. watch it every night, 100%. It's or intense. you'll just like, you just kind of watch 10 of them in a row, you know? You'll oh, wow. Like, <laughs> I better get back into it. Binge watch I it. I'm looking forward to the next season of The Crown. I hear Princess Ooh. Diana is is in this season, and that is who I am named after. So that is, uh, I'm excited about that. I've got seen. And... It. I've not seen it. Oh, We've not seen any of them. Oh. And also, you know, when I um, I need to I need to know. I need you to watch it, and then I need you to tell me about the historical accuracy. <laughs> yeah, I heard it's pretty spot on. I heard it's pretty spot on. I've heard, I've heard, I've heard it's really I heard spot. the Queen watches it. So. Oh really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the Queen's yeah, pretty cool, she... actually. The Queen's pretty. She cool. is really cool. You and know, I mean, yeah. if she, if this is how she is, like, I, I don't yeah. know her personally, but if this is how she is, <laughs> she's, she's a very fascinating person. Yeah, yeah, um, she's, you know, she's definitely not as, she's obviously very, very traditional. She's the queen, for, for goodness sake, but mm -hmm. she's definitely, you know, um, adopted or embraced technology and the, the modern way of life and, and so forth. And which she, you probably wouldn't assume that, but she has. So, um, yeah, it's, it's it the is queen. really. Yeah, yeah, it is very interesting. Um, I mean, it, and I think it's interesting for Americans who are don't have a royal family to understand that dynamic in the country as well. And um, just culturally, it's very interesting to watch. And the cast is awesome. And it, that's a really great show too. Yeah. But one thing, um, so I moved to Texas uh, from Virginia during the pandemic. And I missed going to movies. And, but in Texas, it's beautiful for all year round. And we found a drive up movie theater. So okay. perfect for a pandemic because you're in your own car and you're- yeah, We don't have those here. Space. We don't have those here. I mean- the Yeah, not, not as much as it rains, I don't think. <laughs> I'd love to do that, drive-in movies. That's something you see in Greece. You know? Yes, it's, and they were playing Greece when I went actually, oh, really? which was kind of funny. But we saw Jurassic Park, which is my favorite, favorite movie. I'm so glad the next- I just learned that the next version of Jurassic Park is going to have the original cast along with the new cast. But we saw Jurassic Park at a drive-in. We saw, it was an awesome experience. It's my new happy place. We saw like a satellite in the sky. The sky was so clear. We saw what was, wow. you know, a satellite oh disappear in the sky and it was amazing. Oh my <laughs> yeah. gosh. I, so I love movies. I love the movie experience. Um, I went, when I went to college, I started out with a theater. I thought I started majoring in theater and then shifted to marketing <laughs> throughout my college career. Right. But okay. I have a strong okay. connection to movies and acting and yeah, yeah, no, I, I, I love the movie as well. Definitely get, kind of getting more and more and more into it with Netflix. It kind of makes it easy, doesn't it, really? You know? mm -hmm. But I'm scared because of the pandemic and so many shows and movie production being shut down during the pandemic, I'm scared we're going to have a lull. Yeah, they're going to run like out, months. aren't they? This is what I keep thinking. They're going to run out of programs at some point. Run out of content. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. no, <laughs> don't do that to me. <laughs> right. Imagine, that's got to start doing things, regurgitating things from like you know, 1960s or whatever. Which or... they're already doing, all of these reboots, but right. yeah, yeah. I guess I'll take it. <laughs> Just don't stop producing things. I know, I know, you're absolutely right, absolutely right. Listen, Diane, has been absolutely wonderful. It's absolutely wonderful having you on as my first international guest on the Digital Hub, and also my first tech vendor, really, do you know what I mean? The SaaS platform that's revolutionizing the the way um, digital marketing uh, projects and assignments are being implemented. So it's great to have you on board as a guest.
Thank, Thank you, you so for much. having me. This was so fun. I could listen to you both talk all day long. <laughs> you both have such yeah. lovely voices. Let's do it. Let's do it again. We'll do another every six months. We'll do another one. Yes. Fun. Okay. Well, yeah. and so in Cheryl's episode, she mentioned someone should interview you. So if you want to host to interview Ooh, you, yes. Ian, I volunteer. I think that, that would be great. Be awesome. Mm -hmm. oh, Cheryl keeps talking. We'll have about cocktails me. too. It'll be really fun. Oh, oh yes. Course. Yeah, with alcohol. Yes. That'd be really fun. Great. That'd be great. Can you imagine at the end of it, be like, yeah. We'll, we'll get all the dark secrets yes. out then. I'm sure there's a lot we could learn. Oh my mm, gosh, I I'm glad. Like, no, I, I can't find that episode. I've deleted it by mistake. <laughs> <laughs> We're editing that out in post. Oh no. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly that. That's fantastic. So, I mean, is there anything you want to say before we go? That we'll say to our audience, I mean, we've got a growing audience. It grows each week, uh, listeners and viewers. So is there anything yeah. you want to say before we kind of wrap it up? Anything you no, want to good say? luck with that. This is such a fascinating podcast. I'm so glad we found each other. So, you know, it's so exciting to be a part of your kind of beginning journey in this too, Ian, and it's fabulous. So thank you so much for reaching out to, to us. And I hope we get to connect again soon. I hope we're friends for life now. It's been yeah, really yeah, fun. Yeah, yeah, me too, me too. It's been, it's been great. I really, really enjoyed it. Really enjoyed it. Me too. Are you, Cheryl, anything you want to say, Cheryl? Anything you want to add, Cheryl, from a digital marketing perspective or anything you want to add? Not really, no, just really excited to meet you, Diana. It's been really great fun. So, uh, yeah, looking forward to going to explore the rest of the tools that I've missed on SEM Rush. So, uh, well, shoot me an email or chat me on LinkedIn if you have any questions and uh, I can help you out. That's amazing. Thank you. Yeah, looking forward to that. Wonderful. Thank Thanks a lot, guys. Really appreciate it. Really appreciate it.